Okay, so Dope Display have sent me this 15.6 inch laptop, which is basically designed that you can plug pretty much anything into it. And it's a very cool design. So it's a two in one design, uh, so you can basically fold it completely flat and use it like a tablet, but you can also use it in the sort of tent design as well. And as you can see from here, you can wirelessly project to it, whether it's an Android device uh, or an iOS device. So I'm going to see what I can get running with it, with a little help from my cat. So let's start plugging some things in. So this is an Honor View 20 Android phone, uh, and this has a desktop mode on it. So if I plug it into the USB-C socket on the side, you can see it starts charging straight away. And if we have a look here, wired projection, so I'm going to agree to that, and you can see it comes straight up on the screen, and uh, it goes straight into desktop mode. And I've been already using this with YouTube just now, and so you can see it's come up straight away with my videos. Uh, I can use it in this mode, so I can basically start watching a video, and you can hear the audio is coming out of it because it's got a couple of speakers in this. But I can also flip this around because without any setup at all, the mouse and keyboard is connected via the USB-C cable. So if I go back in uh, into the browser here and just do a search for Lee PSP video HDR and you see it comes up with my videos and I can either use touch or the trackpad and you can see it goes into the video and all of this is working absolutely fine and all the touch gestures that you'd expect are all working so I can pull up the apps and use all of that. If you've got a Samsung phone, the great thing about this is uh, you know, every time you upgrade your phone, you've got a new, more powerful device that you can just plug into this and use it as a laptop. And the DeX system works even better than this does. I mean, this is quite an old Android phone. I plan to get a Samsung one in the future to give it a try with DeX. Now I mentioned the sound, which is fine. Uh, and we can press the function button and we can use the uh, volume buttons on the keyboard here, that's maximum volume. I can turn up the brightness and down and so on. But I can also, if I tap here and swipe down, you can see I've got loads of different controls on here. And this is a lot easier than the average system on a monitor because everything is touch control. Uh, and we can switch between two different menus here so you can see you can change the color balance. We've got reset options. Uh, we've got a rotation lock there as well, exit and also USB-C and HDMI, which I'll get to those later on. So here I've got a very cheap seller on Windows laptop, and if I wanted to project to another display, they're not connected in any way. Uh, so connect to a wireless display, and you see options will come up here. And the flipbook has come up, so let's click on that. So we click on duplicate these displays, and we'll do extend these displays. So now what we have is I can move my mouse over to the right hand side, it's on the wireless display, and then back to the left, it's back on this laptop. Now this does work fine, but if you want better performance on the laptop display, you are better to use a wired connection. So let's plug in a mini HDMI, which on the other end is full size HDMI, but I'm gonna put another mini HDMI adapter on it because this laptop's mini HDMI. Let's plug that in. And you can see that instantly is gonna switch over to dual screen mode. And so I've got YouTube on the right hand side here. Let's go into settings and see if we can enable the mouse and keyboard on this screen. So it's come up on this screen here. Uh, it's uh, Bluetooth. So add a device. So keyboard has come up now as an option. So now if I press the Windows key on this right hand side, you can see that it's actually operating it. So if I right click one of these windows, I should be able to drag it over to the other screen. Yeah, excellent. So let's have a look at the cables I've been sent. So I've got a USB A to C, a USB C to C. Uh, I've also got the mini HDMI to standard HDMI that I've been using and a 45 watt USB-C power adapter, and also this braided cable with an L-shaped USB-C to USB-C. So you can see it's very slim in its design, and uh, on this side we've got the HDMI mini port, we've got the display port USB-C, and also the other USB-C. 
and we've got a micro SD card slot which is available in some operating systems. Uh, we've got a power switch, a USB-A and also a 3.5mm headphone jack. And there's some nice stable rubber feet on the bottom here and you can see the model DR158W and it's 9 to 20 volt. And here's a CADAS Edge 2 SBC and you can see I'm using two USB-C cables. I reckon I did get it to work once with just the one braided cable but it seems to prefer to boot up when you've got a separate power cable in. Uh, all powered by this device so you can see there's nothing else plugged in and if I press and hold the button the light comes on and it will start to, oh it says dope display on there and it will start to boot up. You can see the lights are coming on and it starts to boot Android. And you can see here all the touchscreen gestures work absolutely fine so all the menus and everything are really nice and easy to use. I can also use the trackpad so if I just use the top bit here so kind of settings and all the scroll up and scroll down with the trackpad is nice and responsive. So if we go back into a game, so you know multitasking works excellent. Uh, so how do I go back on this? And here we go. Obviously this is easier if you're holding on to it. Here's Android running on a Raspberry Pi 4 and if I plug in a USB cable, I might be able to get some touch control going through it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so touch control is working on that. So if I slide down from the top, you can see all the menus are working. And if I slide up, I don't know what I put on here. Not very much. So if I wanted to launch AppTide, oh, I'm not connected to the internet because I usually use a wired connection. But yeah, that's working with the Raspberry Pi 4, but not powering it. If you try and power it from the dope display, uh, it for some reason doesn't power it. Um, I could get some, some light coming if I did USB A to see, I could get it to light up but it wouldn't boot, uh, but when I plugged in a separate power supply and you can see HDMI is in here, it's all working. Okay, so this is the Raspberry Pi 4 running Raspberry Pi OS and I'm going to plug in my Logitech keyboard uh, just to be able to try and pair the Bluetooth in it. So if we go Bluetooth, add a device, yeah, keyboard has come up and let's hit pair, waiting for response, connected successful. So this is still working, but this is working as well. Yeah, great. So now what I need to do, uh, is this connected? Yeah, it's just connected via Wi-Fi. Let's call up. This is actually the OS I was using in my Raspberry Pi 02W. So maybe I need to see if that works as well. Do a search for BBC Sports, just to show that it's working as it should be. Yeah, that's all working fine. And I can scroll up and scroll down perfectly well. My Pi 02W is able to be powered from the laptop and you can see I'm plugging in with just an HDMI cable and uh, it's just waiting for me to log in. Let's try a bit of retro gaming with a PlayStation 2 Slimline. So let's switch that on and I've got it plugged in with a PS2 to HDMI adapter which is being powered from the display. You can see the USB cable is going into that. Uh, obviously the PlayStation is plugged into the mains and if I switch the input on here to HDMI, we can play one of the greatest games of all time. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's working perfectly. That's great to see. Such a good game. Absolutely love it. Ooh. Now if we go a bit older, I've got an original PlayStation 1 here with the analog outputs. I'm going into an analog to HDMI converter and that HDMI is just plugged into the laptop and this little HDMI device is being powered by the laptop as well. Now we could go with Dave Mirror again but I think I'm going to boot up the original PlayStation demo disc which I haven't seen for a while. This bit at the back was for playing your own backups of games and you used to have to have a spring that pushed down this to keep the laser going uh, when it was open. So let's pop this in. And switch on. Destruction Derby. Okay, so Destruction Derby didn't load, so I'm going to try Twisted Metal from this other demo disc. Yeah, that's working fine. 
It makes a great second screen for my M1 Mac. Uh, I'm using an HDMI output straight to the HDMI mini. And you can see on the left hand side, I can scroll up and down. I can move along to the right and control that. But also, if I move around, I can use the keyboard on this side. Uh, and also I can control the Mac with it. Very nice. This is my 1999 compact laptop running Windows 98. And as you can see, it's working fine. It does look a little soft with the AV output. Not sure what people would use that for back in the day. But uh, if I quit out of that, it's so snappy this laptop. Is there anything I can do with displays? So, the trackpad terrible on this. So I've got display here, settings. Oh, second display, okay. So display two, extend my Windows display, okay. This isn't gonna work, is it? I was doing something. No way, that actually works. So if I drag this screen over, <laughs> that's amazing. As I say, doesn't look brilliant if we do add new hardware, <laughs> but it is working. Also working is the Xbox Series S, and uh, you really just need the HDMI to HDMI mini cable. I've got the red cable, which is USB-C to USB-A plugged in, because I want to use the mouse and keyboard with it. A mouse and keyboard has got a lot better if I launch Edge. Uh, you can see this is my YouTube channel, and multi-touch gestures are working on this. Things like zoom and scrolling and everything. Uh, I also have Office 365, so if I want to launch, say, Word, and if we want to use it just like we would on a normal computer, we can insert a picture. Let's pick some of these stock images. Yeah, pretty cool. And just to show what the sound is like, we switch into a game. And keyboard and mouse support is there as well, so I can do things like look around, and I can drive around with mouse and keyboard although I would rather the controller for this particular game. But nice to see it working. And we go from the most recent Xbox to the oldest Xbox. It's a great startup. And uh, I can't remember to use this, I modded this years ago. So we've got a bit of FIFA 2007 on there. It doesn't look the clearest, but it plays fine, or nearly. And we've got all sorts on here. This was modded with the Splinter Cell game. Uh, it was a hack years ago, so launch emulators, and yeah, Neo Geo, PlayStation, N64, all sorts on there, nice. So I mentioned before that uh, I don't have a Samsung phone to try, but I took it into my workplace, and uh, a colleague had an S22, and we gave that a quick try and uh, it worked absolutely fine. Dex really works well on that device. We tried the wireless charging with this wireless charging pad here, which I can demonstrate with my AirPods. It worked with the S22, and as you can see, it's charging my AirPods. And it's magnetic, so it doesn't fall off. We can also use the wireless system for iPhone or iPad. So I've got my iPad here, uh, and if I go into settings and connect to the Wi-Fi that is the laptop, so you can see here, flipbook. And the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but I've already connected that. Uh, now what I can do is slide down from the top and select AirPlay mirroring. And you'll see that it switches over to the lap dock. And now we're projecting, and you don't need a network to do this. I did this the other day in the car uh, from my phone, and I was watching YouTube videos while I was waiting for my daughter, uh, and I basically put the screen over the steering wheel. It was really good, uh, because obviously it's a massive screen for a car. Uh, so now if I go into Bluetooth, if it's not showing the keyboard, you press Function and C, and the keyboard will show up. So you can see keyboard is here and then pair, and now I can use mouse and keyboard. So you can see the mouse pointer. So say for instance, I wanted to go into LumaFusion, which is my editing software that I'm using for this video. 
I can use that and you can see from the screen behind how responsive it is. It does seem to be nice and fast and it was perfectly fine for watching videos. Uh, so if I go into just one of my videos on here, let's just play a bit of something earlier on. You can see AirPlay comes up here and it comes out of the laptop. And if I turn the audio up, maybe I need to, tell, oh, I need to unmute it on here. And that's coming through fine. And things like the web browser works really nicely. And as I say, you can see, well, this isn't connected to the internet now because it's connected to the laptop internet to do this. What I can do is plug in this USB-C to HDMI adapter, and then it will switch to HDMI connected. Then what I could do is I could connect back to my home Wi-Fi, which is here. And now the internet will work fine. So if I do a search, well, let's just go Amazon. You can see it's working brilliantly and I'm guessing it will be even quicker. Uh, and you can definitely game. I've, I've got videos of gaming on an iPad on a second screen and it works perfectly well with a controller. So thanks very much to Dopesplay for sending me this device. I'm really impressed with it. It's very, very versatile. Uh, the next part of the video is a bit I recorded earlier, but it took ages and it's getting a really old console to work. So I put it at the end. Guess the year this product is going to be from? 1978. Got this off eBay a while ago. Now the light gun's not going to work because that needs a CRT. But uh, the machine, now I might need to cheat a bit uh, on this. I mean, obviously the mini AV adapter probably is cheating a little bit but I might need to cheat even more because this connects, if I've got the adapter, I think it's inside. I've got a separate video on this if you're more interested in the machine itself. This connects via RF, uh, which is like a TV aerial input, and it used to use batteries. Now the way I cheat is by using this as an RF converter, so this is a VHS video, and I can go, oh, I need a SCART adapter as well. <laughs> now this one is moving in the wrong direction, so I can't use this one, but luckily I have a switchable one. So switch it to output, let's not worry about audio, well I suppose I could put audio in, and work out which SCART is the output SCART. This one says to TV, now we've got a display, Need to plug the RF cable into the aerial socket on the back. Check out the connection, three and a half mil jack for power. That could be dangerous, they wouldn't allow that these days. And controls, and switch on. Well the sound comes out through here, so I didn't need that audio jack. Oh, we have signal. So we've got signal on the monitor. Okay, so the setup has changed. To say this has taken a long time would be an understatement. I've been messing around with all sorts of things. So I've now got a DVD player. I did have another DVD player in place, but uh, it didn't work. Uh, there was something to do with the output stage, nothing to do with the ultra dock, uh, which is now what I'm told they're calling it. It actually is faulty, and so I'm gonna take it to the dump. But this DVD player works fine. Unfortunately, I didn't have a remote control. I did manage to get a one for all, which I had in the loft, uh, programmed for it, but it didn't have the necessary functions to be able to control it. Uh, and then I ended up using my faithful LG G3, which has an infrared remote app, which actually controls this fine. Uh, and I was amazed that it controls it. So you have to group it and so on. So the key button I needed was the setup button, which gives me this setup menu. And then I had all my usual up, down, left, right, and so on. And I managed to tune it in on auto tuning. So let's just hit return and go back to the game. I'm not sure if this is gonna be the best channel or if some of the other channels. So program one, program two. This is supposed to be in color, but I've had trouble trying to tune this in on other devices in my previous video. Yeah, it looks like the only one that actually works is program four, which is this one. And just to show how it's set up, so, Here's the VHS video. I've got AV out going out, just video because the console does the sound itself, going into the AV to HDMI adapter, which is going HDMI into the ultra dock. And I've also got 
the USB in which is powering this little device and the console you can see the RF cable is going all the way around here the other one is the mains cable and going into the RF in and I've just got one control plugged in at the moment so let's give it a go so of the games this is tennis you can see the black controller on the left hand side and the white controller uh, I'm just going to put it on one player squash which is this one and uh, put it on auto serve low speed for now and you can see that low speed, well even low speed's not not super easy. The paddles aren't as smooth as the Atari ones that came out a lot later, but they are they're usable. But if I change it to high speed, you'll see that it's super hard. That's better. Now I've got it. I'm at a bit of an angle as well, which probably doesn't help. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.